Hey, JC here at JC's Comics and More, your pop culture superstore. That's 6725 West Central Avenue. That's Toledo, Ohio. 4361-741-9531-6097. Still processing that major collection. I picked up about a month and a half or so ago. And getting the Hulks taken care of. We've got Hulk 104 here. We already priced that one up. We've got 109. We've got the Kazar. Uh, this here, interesting. Uh, Herb Trump and uh, John Severin. But you've got on the inside, you've got uh, Frank Giacola did the layout. I know Frank did some uh, artwork from time to time, but mostly he was an inker. I think he may have inked did he ink this issue of Amazing Spider-Man. No, he did not. That was uh, inked by John Romita of Gil Kane inks or pencils. But uh, this issue here, Hulk just wants to be left alone. He's in communist China, I believe. And, you know, he just, yeah, he's in the heart of red China. And he just wants to be left alone. The Chinese are shooting him, and he's like, ah, you know, more bullets hitting me. And this time they've gone too far. Yeah, you know, now it's the Hulk's turn. Hulk can scatter little men like flies. No, nothing stops the Hulk. And somehow he ends up in... The Savage Land. Of course, if he's in the Savage Land, you know that Kazar and Zabu is not going to be too far behind. And the Murder of Swamp Men are in here. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool issue. We've got the Stan Soapbox. This is very cool. I uh, shot some pictures of this for the shop's Instagram. Uh, uh, page which is under JC's Comics and More, just like uh, this uh, YouTube channel is. And I shot pictures of that so you can read that in a little bit more detail. And I'm going to have some other stuff in there. I've got some house ads I put in there as well. And then I noticed that uh, this has a letter by Tony Isabella. Several of these Hulk issues had different uh, letters from different pros who went on to become pros. Um, let's see if this has a house ad in it also. No house ad. But there is a survey in this. First prize was a hundred dollar U.S. savings bond. Second was a fifty. Third was a twenty-five. That was pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of these issues that have uh, surveys in them, but uh, don't expect to get a hundred dollar savings bond now. Issue one twelve. Get this great Herb Trump cover. Smiling Stan and Happy Herb Trump. Take a quick look. Look, you could you could buy sea monkeys, and also let's go back to this real quick to one of these house ads or one of these ads. Why do you read so slowly? You know, I mean, look at these things. Look at these ads. Again, I've got a picture of this on the shop's Instagram if you want to read more in detail. And also early He-Man appearance too. You can have a He-Man voice by the power of Grayskull. I think this might have, there it is, there's the house ad for the FF83 uh, and Captain America 110. So you got that house ad in there. And we have a letter by Gary Rafferty. I wonder if it is the Gary Rafferty. Uh, I'm going to have a picture of that, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tag his name to that and see if he, uh, if he answers. I, I believe he's still alive. Hopefully he's still alive. Again... Got more Stan Soapbox. So again, we, we shot more of those. So I go through and check to make sure everything is in here. Got 115. Talking to the Avengers housekeeper, their cleaning woman. Leader makes a, a fresh appearance. Thought he was gone. Got another, got more house ads right there. Got a picture of that on the shop's Instagram as well. Again, this is some great, cool old comics. Uh, there it is. There's He Man again. That dude just keeps making his rounds. 
And the soapbox here talks about people being angry when when uh, artists leave the books and and they get angry letters. So sometimes the artists, uh, it's their own request, they grow bored with the strip, or they feel they can't draw it as quickly as another strip, or maybe another artist is ill or on vacation. Talks about uh, you know that that some uh, artists insist uh, insist working with a certain a anchor, and certain anchors prefer special pencilers. Some artist writer teams work better than others in our never-ending effort to improve the quality of the mags you spend your hard-earned shekels on. We find ourselves continually changing, experimenting, and innovating. For uh, though we often fall on your trusting little faces, we want you to know that we're in there trying every moment. You know, this is something that Marvel Comics today should uh, go back and, and look at. There's words of wisdom there that they, they should be uh, certainly um, uh, understanding. Here we've got David Kraft. David Kraft went on to write uh, The Defenders for a while, way back in the day. Ooh, he smacked the crap out of the Sandman and knocked him, knocked him right out of his suit. Got 120. This is a classic cover. Of course, great Herb Tramp. You got the evil Inhumans, and then also let's cut back to this real quick. Um, as Stan was talking about uh, the Inhumans, there's a new Inhumans mag that was uh, that was promised, and you're still Inhumanless. Talks about uh, this being the year of the Inhumans. Obviously, the year of the Inhumans didn't come back in the '60s; it came in the more in the 2000s. Now. This is why I check. You got loose pages there. You got uh, so the centerfold's loose on that there. Again, um, here they talk about uh, how the comics used to have maybe two, three parts. Talks about how that they uh, that they're abandoning the policy of continued stories. Yep, we'll try to make each Marvel masterwork complete, and it's each in its own issue. May has been running 50-50. So they went from being continued stories to self-contained issues. Imagine that. Imagine the comics doing self-contained these days. There we got another great house ad. There's some pillows that you can get. Let's see if there's any names on here. I don't think there's any names of interest on here. So we move to 137. The Abomination makes an appearance in there, and the Hulk is lost in space. This is sort of a takeoff on Moby Dick, uh, this uh, story here. Uh, Mike Esposito did the inks on this here. You can see that even though they're both uh, gamma, gamma spawned, that the leader is very, very green. The Hulk is green, and the Abomination is a more of a lighter green. But one of the cool things, look at this moon monster that you could order. And then also, there's Ahab. That's supposed to. That's who that's supposed to be. So let's flip here to the back. Got this great house house ad for Amazing Spider-Man number ninety-four, where they also retold his origin. Although it does not tell you that in the uh, um, in this house ad. Issue 140. This is written by Harlan Ellison. This is the first of a two-parter. First part was in the Avengers. Uh, this is the first appearance of Jarella. And the first part uh, was in Avengers 88. And you got layouts by Herb, art by Sam Granger. The Brute that shot at love at the heart of the atom. It's on a giant, uh, giant warthog and, and kills it. He's still the Hulk. Hulk is still the Hulk. Pig dogs. This also features uh, an ad, and I got a picture of this on the shop's Instagram. You got a young Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is before he really became anybody. That uh, he was this starting to be an actor. But not really known to the world at large in the bodybuilding world. Of course, Arnold was a uh, superstar, but to the man on the street, he was just a muscle-bound bum that uh, could smash their face in. There we got the first appearance of Jarella, and no wonder Hulk is uh, be smitten by her. They put a spell on him, and it gives him the brain of Banner. And it's funny that they've got a 
Shazam. Billy Batson said that. Uh, and this was before DC uh, got the rights to to Captain Marvel Shazam. Also has an Arthur C. Clarke uh, quote in there. But that's very cool right there. Shazam, Billy Batson said that. I know Billy Batson. He was just in, uh, just recently he was in uh, Walt Disney World with his family. And uh, he couldn't wait to get, get out of there. Talks about how comics, uh, more and more people are talking about comics. One of the bullpens talks about, and Stan had, had talked about it had several times that back in the day. And look, you got Bob, uh, DC's answer man, is writing D, is writing uh, Marvel. Imagine that. You got a house ad for uh, Call, the, Call the Conqueror also. But um, Stan talked about how back in the back in the day when he and Joan would go to cocktail parties and be talking to somebody and they'd ask him what he would do and he'd say he's a writer and, and they'd say, well, what kind of stuff do you write? Because comics were, were not looked were looked down upon and, and he would say, well, I write children's books. Because those are, and then eventually it would get to the point where he wrote comics and the person would walk away thinking badly of Stan. Uh, here it is. Hey man, want some proof that comic books are really coming into their own these days? Okay, grab some. Grab onto this. I can still remember going to parties a few years back when people would ask what I did. When they would hear the answer, a comic book writer editor, they would react like Alice from outer space. After which they gravitate over to some seemingly more prestigious playwright or screenwriter. However, Tempest has a way of fugitating. Uh, recently I was attending some similar uh, social uh, feats. Actually, awaiting a chance to yak about the new screenplay I've been writing. And what happened? You guessed it today. It's the comic books that are all in. Everybody's clamoring to hear about our swinging superheroes. But you don't hear yours truly complaining. You and I have always known where comics were at. And now it's a kick to see the rest of the world has finally caught up with us. This was uh, like 1971. So has anything really changed in the last, you know, what, um, you know, not quite 50 years, 40 you know what, 45, 46 years, something like that. Got the 20 cent. Look at the way this, this yellow and this red just pops off here. If America is to live, the Hulk must die. The shocker you never thought you'd see. Look, it's the end of Doc Sampson. And looky there. You got Tricky Dick and you got Spiro Agnew in the background, too. I believe they also showed up in this issue. I'll take a quick look here. There they are. There's Tricky and Spiro. Got Betty. Looking at uh, the letters page. Not a whole lot to really report on this. This was a really good, a really good issue. We had a backup story. Heaven is a very small place. Uh, that was a very moving story. If you get a chance, buy issue 147 of the Hulk. You won't regret it. Get issue 149, and again that red pops off. I the inheritor. And I won't tell you what the shock ending is, who this behemoth that the Hulk's fighting, who seemingly is, is just tearing his way and killing soldiers and, and anyone else that gets in his way. Uh, a very, very moving story. Um, get another picture, good picture of Betty here. So where is it at here? Herb did a really beautiful Betty, uh, Betty Ross. Got 150. You think it's Jarella? Now it's not Jarella, it's uh, it's Polaris. You got Polaris and you got Havoc in here, so they make an appearance. And at the end, Betty finds Bruce and she's happy, and he whispers in her in her ear, "Jarella, my love." Jarella, Betty, Glenn, what is he saying? All these years, all this waiting, what does it mean? Betty, I can't answer that, but maybe when Bruce awakens, he can. Yeah, well, Bruce is in love with Jarella. I think we've all got that secret love out there that. That you, you you keep and you hide away. Look at this here. Attack! Send in your tanks. See, this is could be could be like a role playing game before there was role playing games. Again, these ads are just very very cool. And there you've got Havoc there, trying to stop the Hulk. You got Polaris. The Hulk is tired of getting is getting uh, uh, made a fool. Look at that. It just rips off a piece of the cliff. Takes on a biker gang. 
Got 152. Who will judge the Hulk? Even this cover here with these blues has still pops. And it's all uh, lots of guest stars as the Hulk is put on trial in this issue here. And Matt Murdock is his lawyer. Of course, Matt Murdock's his lawyer. How would Mur Matt Murdock not be his lawyer? And you got J. Jonah Jameson. You got Peter Parker there. You got uh, the uh, the Fantastic Four. And of course, the thing, uh, thing you know, is always cruising for a bruising. Yep, there's Tricky Dick again. He's upset. So let me make one thing perfectly scare Spyro. Oh. He wasn't supposed to be uh, interrupted, but he was. The Hulk versus everybody. The world, my jury, with guest stars galore. Gary Frederick, Dick Ayers, Herb Tremp, John Severin. Extra dialogue by Roy Thomas, Stanley's editor. The Avengers show up, and they, uh, they're in his defense, saying that, uh, you know, you know, trying to speak out for Bruce Banner. And here's a letter by Mike W. Barr. Again, you just never know who you'll see in the letters pages that go on to being uh, uh, actual, you know, uh, uh, pros at one point. Got a really hot Sue Storm there, or Sue Richards at that time. Got Spidey showing up to help out. And the thing's like, who needs help? All I need is a little breathing room, Sonny. Have it your way, big man. But remember, I offered He's off on his own. And the thing punches him. He's like, huh, my best lady punch. He took it and didn't even phase him. Hulk is through playing. Now Hulk will finish. You got 154. Hell is a very small Hulk. You got Ant-Man making an appearance there. And look, you can buy all these albums worth up to $20.94. Any three, you know. You got these Hydra sending rats after the Hulk. Chameleon's in here. This was written by Archie Goodwin. Hulk had several several writers that, that at that time sort of going in and out. You got Shirley Gorman here. Or the reason I mentioned that, I've seen her name in several other letters pages. So again, women have always been reading comics. You know, Marvel tries to make a big deal. We need to go after that female audience. It's always been there. Here we got issue 155. Let's create 1972. He's taking on Captain Atlas, where the Nazis won. But the shape of the world is behind it, behind it all. Look at this. Man, he's going to put a crew, put a beating on the Hulk. The answer to the Captain America's and Submariners and who dared fight us against us, and I can crush the Hulk. Perceive. Don't even know what that means. But long after man in red underwear has run out of fancy word, Hulk still be smashing him. Again, just great stuff. Uh, this uh, soapbox here, uh, just very, very, very good read. You got 157. You got with the Rhino. You got uh, Jim Wilson. Again, this red's just you know, Jim, Jim, a Rhino hurt, hurt you, hurt you bad. But Hulk make him pay. That's it, Greenskin. Just look the other way for one more second, and you'll never look at anything again. The rage of the Rhino. Of course, uh, the rhino takes off. The leader got the rhino. Uh, so he was behind that all. And I gotta watch when I bag this issue. This this little corner piece here is all but falling off. So I'll have to make sure that piece is still in the bag when it does get bagged up. You got the uh, getting the abomination came come back. Uh, the last time we saw the Abomination, the Hulk threw him off and, and threw him down to the, the planet and knocked him out. Here you got Steve Englehart writing it now. Let's go back and see who wrote this issue. This was Archie. So you had Archie, then several issues later you have Steve writing it. Uh, Chris Claremont even wrote the Hulk for a while. Uh, the Hulk and, uh, and the Abomination is just like, just beating the crap out of each other. Here's funny. It, uh... You know, Hulk's telling him that he's members. He is always mad at you, whoever you are. And when Hulk is mad, he smashes. Too bad you don't remember. I'm stronger than you are, stupid. No, Hulk is stronger than all. See how Hulk keeps moving away from, keeps you from from moving hand. And when Hulk wants you to move, you move. You move like broken bird. No one can beat Hulk. 
You know, you, you you get the Hulk on uh, get on the bad side. He's gonna give you uh, give you the business. And the abomination tells them that uh, Betty and Glenn Talbot are married now, and it really, man, that really steams his clams. October 1972, uh, the abomination thought it was 1970. He does not want to know that it's been two years that the Hulk knocked him out for two years. That's how bad the Hulk was. He knocked out the abomination for two years. Talking about, uh, you know, a TKO. And then takes on Tiger Shark. Tiger Shark might have uh, been a match for the Submariner, but the Hulk uh, takes a look at off him for a little while, and then he's had enough. He's had enough of uh, the Hulk's, uh, the, the Abomination, or the Tiger Shark's shenanigans. This is a badly water damaged issue. We've got 161. This is an early. Uh, uh, gray blue beast appearance. Unfortunately, I do not have 162. 162 is the first appearance of the Windigo. But uh, this is a really nice shape book. Uh, also, the mimics in here Steve Englehart. Uh, congratulations to Happier Than Ever Herb Tramp for finally taking the plunge and getting married. That son of a gun. So, Herb got married also. So, Betty got married and Herb got married. But, uh, Beast tried tried to stop the Hulk uh, for a little while, but could not stop the Hulk. Uh, then you got 165 Aquan, the the murderous man fish, another uh, super powerful uh, individual. The Hulk had to uh, put a smacking down on. And you had these individuals that were underwater. Once they came up to the surface, they just started exploding. They turned into bloody pulps. Let's see what this was written by. Steve Englehart. There we go. And then the next issue has the first appearance of the Harpy. Betty Ross. Or Betty uh, Talbot. Betty, Betty Talbot becomes the Harpy. You got uh, current uh, Steve Englehart. Curb, or Trump. The hate of the Harpy. There she is. You got Betty running around naked in this issue. This is considered uh, partially nude, even though you don't really see anything in this at all. She becomes the harpy, and she's messing with the Hulk. Fool of the Hulk. Hulk thinks she's her friend, and she gives him a uh, point blank, a hellbolt, point blank range directed into his chest. There can be no doubt now the harpy has won, and the world will never forget this is the day the Hulk died. Dare we say it? To be Hulk continued. You better believe it. Modoc's in here as well. Again, you got Betty. She's naked. You, you don't see anything, but you know, you, your eyes fill in the blanks there. That's a really good shape. And this is the first appearance of the Bi Beast. And again, uh, she's running around uh, and defeated him. And Modoc once again is in there, and here's that other survey I talked about uh, that there was a couple of surveys. Here's the other survey that's in there, and uh, I haven't been looking at the letters pages to see. There she is. She's naked. Let's see if the uh, let's see. There's no letters page in this issue here. We'll go to 170. Look at that, how that yellow and that red just pops. They lurk in the volcano. Betty's down and out, and there you go, Chris Claremont, writer. Engelhart uh, plotter. Betty wakes up, finds that that she is with the Hulk. Oh, oh, oh my lord, no, the Hulk has kidnapped me. We got Ralph Macchio. Uh, he had his address with, withheld because he didn't want people looking, looking, looking for him, looking up him. Got these monsters that the Hulk had to save Betty. And you got 172. 172. We're missing 171. 171 was the Rhino and the Abomination taking on the Hulk. What a what a, a tag team that was. But here he's side by side with the Juggernaut. First time he uh, clashed with the Juggernaut. He thought the Juggernaut was his friend, and then found out he was not his friend, and puts battles him and finally defeats him. 
And he throws him, he rips off his helmet, and Juggy boy, he just, just smashes. Now this issue here, I also believe, yeah, this here, um, let's find it here. Does this have the, the house ad in the back? No, it does not have the house ad in the back. Maybe this one has the house ad in the back. Okay, that one does not either. That one does not. Try to find this house ad. Okay, it must be the comic after this. But the X-Men making an appearance in here as well. But let's get to uh, try and find what I'm looking for here. It has a little bit of history in this here. The Punisher, the Jackal, which one would destroy Spider-Man first? That's from Amazing 129. So you got, you know, sort of uh, a, a, a appearance there of 129. You got the Cobot Man. Again, that yellow and that red just pops. Got 175 with the Inhumans. And you got Roy Thomas now writing it. So... And you've got, uh, here we go. You've got Marvel Premiere number 15. That's the uh, origin of Iron Fist. So we do have that. Issue 177, he fights Warlock. Death of a Superhero. This features uh, the first death of Adam Warlock. Again, written by now, Gary Conway. And then we've got Annual, which is King Size Special, number two. Reprints a bunch of stuff, including the origin. This is a really, obviously, banged up issue. You've got Kirby. you got a bunch of Steve Ditko stuff from Amazing, uh, from Tales to Astonish. Um, you want something that's nice and cheap and lots of good reading? Here you go. Come buy this, this baby. And then I've got King Size Special, number four. And it's got a Herb Trump and John Severin cover. And got you got uh, Jack Kirby doing some of the art on this here, and he took out the took out the leader. In this here, you got John Romita with the executioner, and the executioner, you know, he was a wuss in uh, and a coward in uh, Thor Ragnarok. Don't get me started on the Marvel movies here. He is holding his own with the Hulk. You know, he is holding his own with the Hulk. And there, you know, you finally find out the, the secret is out that uh, Bruce Banner is the Hulk. And then you got from Not Baron Eck, uh, Stanley and Marie Severin. Marie uh, passed away recently. But uh, this thing is just, it's the, the ever loving thong versus the edible bulk. This thing is, is so funny. I mean, this is worth the price of admission right there. But that's it. If you uh, like these uh, videos, certainly subscribe. And when you subscribe, smash that bell for notifications. Thank you.